Hey everyone, this is Shantaya from the North Branch, and today I want to talk to y'all about one of my favorite things, self-care. We'll go over what that means, look at some examples, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to apply some of these tips to your life. Let's get started. What exactly is self-care? Well, look at what those two words mean. Self, as in a person's particular nature or personality, the qualities that make a person individual or unique, and care, which is the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of someone or something. Simply, self-care is just taking care of yourself, and these are activities we do to ensure just that, keeping ourselves happy and healthy so that we can be there for others. To start off, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey with self-care. Growing up, I always saw my mom take time out to treat herself. This ranged from her getting her nails done or her hair done, running a bubble bath, or just taking a day off work. I always admired that about her, and sometimes I would get to go with her, and we just get to have some, you know, mommy-daughter time. It was fun, enjoyable, and afterwards, I always felt good. And as I got older and into high school, I began to follow these steps as well. I had a job, and when I have extra money, I'd go get my nails done or have a spa day at home to treat myself. I quickly realized that those grooming expenses added up and finding the time to go as often as I wanted to became a hassle for me juggling work, school, and trying to have a social life. So throughout high school, going to a salon or having a spa day at home is all I consider to be self-care. And those things are okay, but it's not the only thing that self-care represents. Um, there are a lot of ways that it can be done, and that's what I discovered when I got to college. I started to explore and learn other ways that I could make myself feel good. So since then, I feel like I have developed some healthy habits when it comes to self-care, um, but we'll get more into that later. So that's pretty much where I am now, and being that I rarely make myself available to other people, my life has been so much better since I've started putting my needs first. Before we get too in-depth, I know that everyone's situation may be different, so if you need to, ask your parent or guardian for permission before implementing any of these self-care practices into your daily lives. Adults love communication, so just talk to them and see what can be worked out. Did you know self-care actually doesn't take as much time as you think? It can be as simple as listening to your favorite song while getting ready in the mornings or canceling plans with a friend to spend some time reading that new book you just got. It's all about prioritizing and seeing what is most important to you. You have to make time for yourself if you want to fully enjoy life. Taking time and care for yourself should be pretty high on your priority list. There's only one of you, and in order for us to live our best lives in the roles that we play in life, we have to make sure we're okay too. We have to be intentional because if we want to be honest with ourselves, time is always there somewhere. Think about the past day or even the past week. How much time did you spend scrolling on social media? How much sleep did you get? How is your diet and exercise? How have you really been feeling? Time management will become a huge part of your life after a while, if not already. The older you get, the more responsibility you'll have. So the earlier you start on this, the better. Since we've gone over what self-care is and how to make time for it, here are 10 things that I do or try to do consistently to show myself some attention. Number one, I say no. This is a lot easier said than done, but when I already have a lot of things going on and somebody asks me to go to dinner or ask for a favor, I have to say no, even if I really want to do whatever that thing is. And if I don't want to do what that thing is, it makes me feel even better. <laughs> so I ask myself, can this wait? And if so, I'll suggest another time frame. So it doesn't seem like a flat out no. Number two is I take social media breaks. There is so much fluff on the internet, gossip, drama, latest news, COVID cases, and the list goes on. And at times it can be way too much. Recently, I find myself taking more breaks than usual. Most phones and social media apps now have it where you can view your usage for that day, week, or month. You can also set up limits so that you're making the most of your time while you're online. 
Number three, I keep track of things. I love planners, the reminders app on my phone, calendars, just all things productivity. When I do plan, I'm setting myself up for success. I write down everything I can think of, appointments, upcoming events, my work schedule, literally anything that comes to mind so that I can visually see everything that's going on in my brain. And when I'm all done, I just feel so much better and my stress levels go down. And that's what you want too, less stress. If needed, take time every week to see what's going on for the next few days so you won't have a brain overload. Speaking of clearing my mind, I keep a journal. I used to do it way more often when I was younger, but even so, journaling has always been a form of therapy for me. I might doodle, write down anything that's bothering me or just random ideas or thoughts that I have. I've typed in my notes app on my phone and also kept a physical notebook as well. And I always love to recommend journaling because there really isn't a right or wrong way you can do it. No pun intended. Next, I make sure that I get enough sleep. I'm a night hawk at heart, but I know that if I don't get at least seven hours of sleep every night, I'll be cranky and I'll have low energy for the next day to come. The recommended hours of sleep range between seven and nine hours. Try to get as much sleep as you can. And also, if you need a quick boost, 15 minute naps work miracles. Number six, I have a day where I pamper myself. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but whether I decide to do it all by myself at home or go out, I always try to set aside at least one day a month where I style my hair, paint my nails, and take care of other grooming needs. Number seven, I find joy in the little things. I've only been doing this more so recently because of the virus, but I try to take note of the little things. I'm paraphrasing, but there's a quote that says, every day may not always be good, but there's always something good in every day. Even if it's listening to my favorite song while you're ready for the day or checking on a friend or family member. Um, try not to worry about that low grade that you might have gotten yesterday or whatever you have to do tomorrow. It may seem corny, but life is short and it's important that we try to be in the present as much as possible because right now is all we truly have. Number eight, I watch or read something random I'm interested in. This ranges from TV shows, movies, books, to videos on how gloves are made or slow motion corn popping videos. Um, anything that I can do or watch to take my mind off of the things that I have to do that day or that week. And sometimes it's just fun to dive into those random rabbit holes of things people probably don't even think or care about. So who knows, maybe it'll come in handy one day. Another thing that I do is I allow others to help me sometimes. Now, this is one that I struggle with the most. I am very independent. I don't like help even if I need it. I have been this way mostly my entire life, but there comes a time where you can't do it all and that's okay. When people ask you if they can do something to help you, speak up. At one point during college, I was working three jobs and my grandma would af would often ask like, if she needed to do anything that could help me. Um, and one day in particular, I remember that I had to work late and I had laundry that I really needed to get done. Um, so I told her that, hey, I really need to get laundry done. And so that night when I got off, um, I looked at my room and my clothes were folded on my bed. Something so small, but it meant a lot. So I know it may be hard, but if you have people in your life that can help you in some type of way and they offer it, let them. Last but not least, I give myself pep talks. If I need a self-esteem boost, encouragement throughout the day, or whatever the case is, I always either read, speak, or listen to something positive. And sometimes it's always nice to have physical reminders around. I even have a few sticky notes in my room and a full list in my reminders app of words, phrases, quotes, and things to read when I need that extra bit of positivity. So those are some of my self-care tips. They've changed my life for the better and hopefully um, you'll be able to incorporate some of these into your life. I'll include some resources at the end to further help you on your road to self-care. Thank you all so much for watching. Continue to stay safe and remember to give yourself the attention that you deserve.